Does Munro Bergdorf have a point with her recent um, explosion of all white people are deeply, and not just deeply racist, they're inherently racist, that it's something that is passed down through generations in some kind of ridiculous genetic code. It's part of our DNA. <clears throat> but does she have a point about racism in the UK? Now, I've said on a number of occasions that um, I oppose certain ideologies. I'm against Islam, I'm against Scientology, I'm against Catholicism, I'm against Mormonism. In fact, there probably isn't a religion apart from Buddhism, which is technically not a religion, um, that I don't oppose in some way. They all have their less than ideal parts and perspectives. However, if we look more closely at the UK, and I know Munro's getting a lot of shit at the minute, and to be honest, rightfully so, because she made an inherently racist comment, yet the BBC were quite happy to give her a platform. Um, and in fact, the only two people that I've seen that have really challenged her, quite bravely, this is going to hurt me to say it, Piers Morgan, she got a rough time from Piers, and Andrew Neil on this week, who he wasn't going to tolerate any of her crap. However, do I think she's got a point? If we look at organisations like the EDL, and as much as I've got a lot of respect for Tommy Robinson and what he's achieved, um, fundamentally the EDL became a pretty racist organisation and he had to fight very hard to keep those factions out. We have the likes of Nick Griffin, we have the British National Party. Um, I grew up in a, a, a generation where, you know, spray paintings of um, National Front and Combat 18 were, were pretty commonplace and I, I genuinely believe we've moved on from that, I really do. Um, however, however, um, the far right still exists in this country, there's no doubts about that, the far right exists in this country. Um, and when we try and look at the problem that we currently have in this society that we're in. We've got the left on one side, we've got the right on the other. And what neither of those two perspectives understand is you get what's called the horseshoe effect. The more extreme you go in each direction, left or right, you both fundamentally end up in the same fucking position. Um, and it appears to be that the mainstream media, led predominantly it would appear by the BBC, are almost fueling this divide between left and right. Um, but I, I believe that, that there are issues on both sides of the argument. But when you've got the likes of <laughs> Britain first, um, the little double act that they are um, mooching around with their comp pantomime, great big white um, Christian crosses in predominantly Muslim areas, being provocative, being disrespectful, being confrontational. I don't think that helps. I don't think that helps. We live in a wonderful country that has its very foundations and very fabric built upon the fact of immigration. The vast majority of people in the UK, if you want to trace it back, we're all immigrants. It's one of the most beautiful things about this country. It's one of the reasons I moved away from London and came back up to the Leicester area. I love it. I love the feeling of being in a multicultural city, in a multicultural area. But I understand that we have problems. What's becoming frustrating is the fact that, <clears throat> and I don't want to go over all ground, but we've, we've kind of looked at the, 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 the rape crisis that we've had in virtually every city and small town from the north all the way through to the south. And the way that that's been reported on and the fact that people's fear of being accused of racist came before a child being abused. You know, and that I can't stomach. I can't deal with that. I am anti-Islam, and that's somebody that that was um, very committed to the religion for a while, until you start to. The more you dig into it, and the more you you look at it with a kind of westernised approach, you start to realise that it has real problems. But the biggest part of it, and I've said this before, is the fact that Islam has never progressed since the Quran was first written. We have the Bible and, and Christianity that's gone through many, 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 many cycles to get to where it is today. And you have two very, very different stories that run in the Bible. You know, you have the Old Testament and the New Testament, and they're very, very different. 
However, back to Munro. We do have a racial problem in this country. To say that, that we don't would be irrelevant. Do I believe that Britain is a, a deeply racist nation? No, I don't. I think we are by far one of the most tolerant, welcoming and easygoing societies on the planet. And people like Munro, who are allowed by the BBC to have their little soapbox to sit on, to preach their hate, to preach their racism, is what is getting people's backs up. People like me. I think, I was sat there watching this week and I was like, how the fuck are the BBC allowing this? Because if there was a white transgender model sat on that sofa and she turned around and said, uh, all people of colour are racist, inherently racist. It's, it's deeply rooted in their culture. Um, do you really think the BBC would have aired it? Do you really think the BBC would have allowed that film had it been a complete mirror image the opposite way around? No, they fucking wouldn't. And this is why people are getting pissed off. It's about equality. And this is the irony that Monroe Burgoff does not understand. That she has the life that she has because of the tolerance, acceptance and progressiveness of the society that she grew up in, that she lives in, that pay a substantive portion towards her fucking lifestyle. And if she's too stupid to realise that, and she's just going to beat the same fucking race card that we've heard for the last 40 fucking years, it's getting tiresome. It's getting to a point where I'm just like... You're creating a bigger fucking problem because you're actually, people are now thinking, will you just, if you're not happy, fuck off. Because she's got a point. That's the ridiculous thing. She has got a point. It's a psychologically proven fact that we pass a lot of our, our morals, beliefs and our political compasses down to our children. So to a certain degree, there's an element of it that is passed down through generations. Absolutely. I grew up in a generation where you heard racial terms a lot more common. It's only kind of been in probably the last 25, 30 years where we've really made progress to, to stamp out racism. I find racism its most base level. Judging somebody on the colour of their skin, fucking ridiculous. It's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. And I've got a good friend of mine who I've known for many, many years, a guy called Danny, who is dual heritage. His dad is white, his mum is black. His mum comes from a very, very traditional West Indian um, family, um, you know, predominantly, you know, Sundays at their, their house were always church in the morning, then all the family gather around, and some of my happiest memories growing up were around at Danny's. Um, and I spoke to him not long ago, I said, you know, do you find that you have to pick and choose which of your heritages that, that you, you, you put your roots to or, or, or do you accept them from both? And he says, well, my dad's white, my mum's black and I'm dual heritage. I said, both of my heritages are important to me. He said, but the problem I've got, if you and I were to walk into a bar and walk out again and, and someone was asked to describe us, they'd say, oh yeah, there was a white man and a black man. He said, it doesn't matter of my white heritage because people don't see it. He said, even my own ethnic group of that side don't see it and they don't allow me to embrace that that aspect of my, my white heritage because there is an element within the West Indian community that still has that resentment because it goes back a long way this is hundreds of years but he said one of the biggest issues I see with my mum's community is the fact that for many years they they utilize the white that the, the the race card against against white people. Every time something didn't go their way, rather than actually looking at it pragmatically, they'd automatically go, it's because I'm black. Whereas now, and I've, I've recently, I, I worked for a local authority, big, one of the biggest local authorities in the UK, and I know this for a fact that there was positive discrimination. It was done on a regular basis. People from various ethnic groups were getting jobs that they weren't qualified for, they weren't experienced in, that they weren't the best candidate, but they got the job because the local authority had a quota to fill. We've even seen it with schools being marked down by Ofsted for not having enough 
children from specific ethnic groups, which again is, is fucking ridiculous. If you live in a particular area, for example, in my village, um, I live uh, a small village um, on the Leicestershire Nottinghamshire border. You know, the only ethnic groups in that village are the people that own the food outlets. You know, that that's just how it is. The schools have a very, very, probably less than 1% of people from the various different ethnic groups opposed to white British. So this kind of all ties in to the fact that I think that part of this problem was that Anything negative that happened to an individual from a West Indian or African community who, you know, the, the, the traditional Afro-Caribbean from the immigration of the 50s and 60s, for 25, 30 years, because the initial shock of that, because it was a big thing in the 50s and 60s when all of these kind of Indians, Pakistanis, Bangladeshis came over here. Um, it, was, it was a culture shock for the nation. Absolutely, of course it was going to be. Um, and it took time, but I think it was a dual problem. Because the other ridiculous thing is, is you know, I guarantee you've got Indian restaurants up and down this country with dumbass, stupid racists tucking into their food, pissed up, and they, they, they can't realise the hypocrisy of that. Because the next day they'll be at some fucking Britain First march, slagging off every Muslim they can think of. Um, it, it's an incredibly complicated problem. So back to my original point, you know, we had the black community who, if we look at that situation now, it's very, very different from the one when I was growing up, when I was a teenager, which was, you know, over 20 years ago. Um, that aspect was changing and it's been positively changing ever since. I, I get annoyed when people say to me multiculturalism has failed. Multiculturalism hasn't failed. I went to a school in a very predominantly middle class white area just outside Derby. And we were little over, that particular area was right on the edge of a place called Normington, which was predominantly um, Indian and Pakistani, you know, Hindu, Sikh, Muslim, you know, lots of different communities. But the school predominantly was pretty much a 50-50 split. And there was no issue. There was no racial tensions. There was none of this bollocks. We integrated and learned about each other's religions. And it wasn't a fucking problem. I think what we have seen is the radical aspect of Islam, and I think this is where they learn a lesson from the black community in Britain, where the black community, I think, genuinely would raise race if it was an issue, and it was, but I think what they tended to do a lot of the time was everything negative that happened, it's because I'm black, when that probably wasn't always the case. In fact, as time has gone on, it probably became less and less and less and less and less and less and less. Whereas we have this problem now with Islam, and I think this is kind of where Munro was looking at it on the basis that there is a lot of em emphasis on, on, on Islam at the minute. But Islam isn't a race. But globally what Islam did was to slot the word Islam and Muslim and create it into a race ball, which it isn't. You know, you wouldn't say, I fucking hate Christians to be a, a racist slur. But if you said the same about Muslims, you'd have everybody's head turning, wouldn't you? Because that sounds racist, because it's been constructed that way, very specifically as well. So back to my original point, does Monroe have a... I think there's a little bit of what she's saying is right, and we need to tackle that. But there needs to be equality. And the point is, a white person couldn't have got away with saying what she said. And the fact that she was sacked from a fucking job because the statement she made was racist, and she hasn't even had the decency to acknowledge, oh, well, maybe I was right. No, she'll probably play the victim card that she seems fucking phenomenal at. You sacked me because I'm black. No, you were sacked because you made a fucking horrendous judgment and painted an entire nation or an entire swathe of people with the same fucking brush. You know, I've never been on an EDL march. I've never been on a Britain First March. I don't, I'm not really interested in what those groups are doing. The best thing Tommy Robinson ever did was move away from that. Because when you actually sit and listen to the guy, he has got a point. We need to have equality. Re religion should be a choice, like everything else. If we live in a democracy, we should have the right to say what we want. And if it's hate speech, and we're going to have laws about hate speech, well, it has to work both fucking ways, and it doesn't. It doesn't. Maybe that's what Munro should put her, her efforts into. Maybe that's what she needs to focus on. Actually, there are lots of white people the vast majority, you think of a shit what your skin colour is, I could care less. Go to the fuck. 
But I will challenge your stupid fucking ideas. I will challenge you when you're being racist. Because the minute, the minute somebody white and particularly male, we can move on to that at another point, um, scoots even slightly towards race. It's like, oh, racist, racist. It's not the fucking case. But what she did was a blatantly racist statement. And she lost her job for it. Not really a consequence because I think she picked up another job in a matter of days. But what does annoy me is she's been given this platform to regurgitate this fucking hateful narrative and rhetoric that she's pushing out. And as far as I'm concerned, it's racism. But you know what? You know, we'll, we'll put money in an in, in investment and spend millions on, on arresting people and putting them in prison for a fucking tweet. A fucking tweet. But we won't tackle this. So where's the equality? All that's doing is adding to the divide because somebody sat there, I was sat there thinking, oh, hang on a minute, because if I fucking said that, I'd have been arrested. But she gets away with it. And she has the life because of the tolerance, because of the acceptance, because of the progressiveness of the society we live in. Anyway, I've ranted enough. Leave a comment, all that kind of crap. Um, I'd be genuinely interested to in what people think about Munro because I think that she's pissed a lot of people off. Um, purely the fact she said made a racist statement and then she tried to justify it with a load of fucking baseless double down arguments that didn't mean shit. All she did to me, well, I was just like, what the fuck? And when Andrew Neil tried to challenge it, one last thing actually, Andrew Neil was the only thing about the This Week interview that I, 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 I was pleased with. Ed Balls, Martin Patillo, fucking grow a pair, you fucking livy liver pieces of spineless shit. Challenge her, she said something fucking racist and all you two did was tip her around. <laughs> we don't want to offend anybody, oh god, we've got a right minefield here. Dual heritage, transgender, Arr! fuck me, get me on that, I'd have ripped her to shit and said, come on then, justify your racist bollocks. Anyway, take care guys, thank you.